There was some audio of Lane Kiffin that was leaked today that's both pretty crazy on the surface and then pretty crazy when you dig into it a little bit. You remember, oh, about a year ago, I did a segment on NIL, and I talked about how I personally don't have a problem with NIL, especially in the true spirit of NIL, but I said a lot of people championing NIL are not ready for the consequences. You can't just have NIL. You can't just all of a sudden treat guys as if they are paid employees and not expect a different kind of culture and different kind of environment to permeate college football. You may not be able to legally call them employees, but when they're getting paid, they're employees. They're going to be treated as such, even more so than they ever had before. And I thought that in due time, there were going to be examples of that extreme tough love or absent love and just just brutal truth and honesty that exists in the real world, maybe at your pace of employment, that was going to percolate throughout college athletics. And I didn't think a lot of people were ready for that. They just didn't know what they were asking for. With that in mind, let me tell you about a kid named DeSanto Rollins. He was a three-star defensive tackle in the 2020 recruiting cycle, been pretty injury prone. He's at Ole Miss. He switched to scout teams, switched sides of the ball. He wasn't crazy about that. Uh, The coaching staff as most coaching staffs do, not so subtly suggested, maybe you should transfer. He didn't want to transfer. And so they put him over on the scout team on offense. He didn't like it. So he said, I'm taking a mental health break. And he disappeared for two weeks. And Lane Kiffin asked to meet with him. And that was on March 7th. And March 21st of this year, DeSanto Rollins finally shows back up when he was good and ready to. And that led to this audio. Roll it, Colin. If you would have come here, when you kept getting messages, the head coach wants to talk to you, and you saying, I'm not ready to talk to him. I wasn't. Well, what f***ing world do you live in? I don't see why you got to be disrespectful, honestly. Get out of here. Go. Go. You're off the team. You're done. See ya. See ya. Because I'm... See ya. Go. Go. And guess what? We can kick you off the team. So go read your f***ing rights about mental health. We can kick you off the team for not showing up. When the head coach asks to meet with you and you don't show up for weeks, okay, we can remove you from the team. It's called being the push. It's called hiding behind and not showing up to work. Uh, This was a calculated move. A lawsuit was filed. That's why that was recorded to begin with. It was all leading to an eventual lawsuit, as these things often are. And the reason you're hearing that audio today is not just because Ole Miss has a big game coming up against Georgia. That audio is courtesy of front office sports, by the way. They broke that story today. You're not just hearing that audio today because it was conveniently leaked right before Ole Miss's biggest game of the season or one of the biggest games of the season. You're hearing that audio today because a motion was filed by Ole Miss to dismiss a lawsuit that was filed on behalf of DeSanto Rollins, alleging all sorts of different impropriety on the way he was treated by Ole Miss. They filed the motion to dismiss, and conveniently, nearly immediately, audio that he had secretly recorded during his meeting with Lane Kiffin was leaked. Now, it's legal in the state of Mississippi. It's a one-party consent state, so you can record whoever you want to. It doesn't mean it's not sketches all get out, but you can do it. Um, That was leaked to manufacture leverage. That was leaked to sort of manufacture an outrage campaign. And, brother, it backfired fantastically, and I'm so glad it did. Because I was ready to come on this show, and I didn't care if the entire world had mounted up against Lane Kiffin. That is garbage. Like, what he had to deal with there is garbage. Now, I'm going to beat a lot of you to the punch. Because this really all centers around the precipice of mental health. The entire premise of DeSanto Rollins allegedly needing a two-week break was in the name of mental health. His fragile emotional state that you heard on that recording is... Uh, being presented under the auspices of mental health. I'm not here to diagnose him one way or the other. I don't know him. I've never met him before. But if you want to tell me, Josh, you got to take mental health seriously now. Depression and mental health is a real thing. You don't have to tell me that. I've talked about that on this show before. I've given you examples of people I know close to me in my personal life. And this isn't one of those, I know people with mental health so I can say whatever I want to about mental health things. It is to say, 
the more seriously you take something, the more you also need to call it out when it's used exactly as Lane Kiffin described as something to hide behind. It is my opinion that mental health here was used as something to hide behind, and the reason can be traced to the timing. And I also will virtually guarantee you this. If this report from front office sports, and if that recording were to indicate that as soon as Lane Kiffin summoned him on March 7th, he showed up, I doubt you'd hear the tone Kiffin took. And that's even with them not wanting a kid on the team. I highly doubt that. You don't get to take two weeks off, man. You don't get to do that. They'd fire you as a volunteer. You go volunteer at a soup kitchen and don't show up for two weeks and you're gone. You're on scholarship in major college football. You don't get when things don't go your way to say, I don't like it here right now, but hold my spot for me now. I'll be back. I'll be back when I'm ready, though. He actually said, I just wasn't ready to meet with him. Yeah, he summoned me. The head coach here who runs the program, he did summon me. You know, the one who gives me the scholarship, he summoned me. I, I just wasn't ready, you know? So on my time, you're not on your time. When you're a scholarship athlete, you're not on your time. I need you to do me one favor. Please, for, for just the remainder of this segment, for like the next two or three minutes, can we please just be real with each other? It's just us. You're not speaking, you're not at a lectern or at a podium. You don't have to use all the focus grouped buzzwords and phrases. You don't have to sanitize things. We all get what's happening here. I think 95% of us get what's happening here. There is not a thing wrong with what Lane Kiffin said. You can tell me, well, he shouldn't use that language. You've never been in a locker room before. You've never been in a competitive environment before. I don't even have to endorse it. I'm just telling you that's par for the course. When you're an adult, and you don't do what you're supposed to do, that's par for the course. Frankly, it could have been a lot worse. So that's par for the course. And if anything, it was probably handled as delicately as one could expect it to be handled in that environment. And secondly, who out there gets away with that? Who, who out there, if everything else is valid, gets away with it? If everything about mental health is valid, if everything about depression is valid, even having checked those boxes, who gets away with that? We don't have any documentation of him raising those issues and Ole Miss saying, we don't care about your mental health. There's none of that. There was, you're here on scholarship, and in exchange, you provide us services. You provide us yourself, essentially, is what you do, and you didn't make yourself available. So, by the way, as of tonight, he's still on scholarship at Ole Miss. He's sitting on that football team, nor should he be. I will give you fair warning on this. Got a little worked up, as you can see earlier today, and still am. I'm going to give you fair warning on it. There are a lot of people in college athletics and elsewhere dealing with valid mental health concerns. They need to be taken seriously. And I think the best way to take them seriously is when someone tries to hide behind it for financial gain and someone tries to conveniently you know, time up a smear campaign, which is essentially what this boils down to, and tries to use it because they know it's like a safeguard and you're not allowed to criticize it. Criticize it. Criticize it. That's what, it, that's what needs to happen when someone does that. Most people, like I said, have never been in locker rooms, so they think that that goes way, way beyond the pale of how you're supposed to treat people and deal with people. You just heard, in the real world, what happens when an adult has responsibility in a highly competitive environment and they don't fulfill their end of the bargain? Blaine Kiffin doesn't fulfill his end of the bargain. He'll get fired. And they won't really care how they talk to him about it. He'll just get fired. It's happened before. They left the dude on the tarmac. N need I remind you? Secondly, causes are like oxygen. And so there are a lot of folks who cover sports in general and who cover this sport who don't really care about the sport. That's why you never really see them go too deep dive into the game itself. But they do rally around drama, soap opera, causes. That's like oxygen to these people. So you will see one or two of the usual casuals out there latch on to this, and they'll get, they'll get a week's worth of traffic out of it. And number three, you're going to have to deal with the drive-by crowd too. People who could not tell you what city Ole Miss is located in, couldn't tell you the mascot of the school to save their lives, will become experts on this overnight. That's going to happen. It'll be delayed a little bit because this hasn't fully circulated out into the mainstream. It will. Kiffin and Ole Miss will have to deal with it. I am probably dealing with it for the last time on this show, and that's...